Mm. Oh, it's you. Yeah, I'm taking a nap. I deserve it. After all, I just saved the entire planet. That's right. The whole planet and everyone on it, you included. You see, it all started far out in space. I mean, far out. You have this popular chain of fast food restaurants? They're all over the galaxy. You'll find one on practically every asteroid. Welcome to Neptunian Nuclear Chicken. May I take your order, please? I will have the Jupiter-sized module of chicken wings. Extra crunchy. Jupiter space bat, extra crunchy. Oh, and a side of coleslaw. One side of coleslaw. Thank you. Now you might be wondering how I know about this, right? Well, I've seen this cartoon before. So anyway, this chain of restaurants is owned by this not very nice guy. What do you mean? I can't open another bajillion restaurant. No one tells me what I can't do. But Commander Harlan, we have not enough chickens. Maybe not, but we will. Come with me. Where are we going? Anticipating this need, I set up a secret research outpost on Earth. In no time at all, they were streaking towards Earth, where certain individuals you may recognize were stopping for chow. We're just going in for a small snack. Do you know what a small snack is, Garfield? Do you know what a foolish question is, John? Even if you took every chicken on this planet, it would not be enough for your needs, Commander. That is why we've developed a ray that will turn every man, woman, and animal on this planet into <laughs> a chicken. Bring in the test subject, and we'll see how it works. Pepperoni and a mushroom. Sausage and a black olive. Meat to lovers is special. Ay, ay, ay. Leave some room, Garfield. Making a lasagna. I don't see your delivery boy working today, Vito. Oh, I just sent him to make a delivery across the street. He'll be right back. No, he wouldn't be, because the delivery boy was about to become the delivery chicken. But I just came to deliver a pizza. Just stand there for one more moment. This ray, this will really transform him into, yes, <laughs> a chicken. <laughs> you owe me Get back to Vito's in $12 for the pizza part. It worked! Can we fry him now? Not yet. First, I have to bombard the entire city. Except anyone who is at this moment ingesting an inhuman quantity of ricotta cheese, tomato paste, and pasta. Um, who would imagine that an inhuman quantity of ricotta cheese, tomato sauce, and pasta could taste so good? Mmm, <laughs> that was great. Hey, Odie, something wrong? Uh-uh! Oh, <laughs> that's the worst chicken imitation I've ever seen. <laughs> and 
That was the best one. What do I do? What do I do? I know. I'll ask John. We should be going, Garfield. We have to stop on the boat. Way home and. Tell me it's not so. Tell me John and Odie haven't been turned into chicken. <laughs> Italian chicken! Chicken parmesan! I have to get out of this coop. Uh, a restaurant. Help! Help! Lots of help! A policeman! He help! Officer! Officer! I would like to report two people and a dog being mysteriously transformed into chickens! the chickening of the population spread across the state, the governor called a hurried press conference. <laughs> this is awful. This is a disaster. Things could not be worse. Never say things could not get worse. Things will always find a way of getting worse. It landed in the park. It was met by the rotten commander Harlan. It will take many trips, but we'll transport all the chickens back home. <laughs> I can hardly wait to start frying them all up. Frying them all up? How are you going to get them all? into our spacecraft. Simple. Chickens love corn. I need to find some way to get inside. Uh, and then he... I joined the procession of poultry, and I would have made it too, except I suddenly remembered something awful. <laughs> I'm allergic to chicken feathers! <laughs> Aren't you even going to say gesundte? Stop that, cat! <laughs> This guy only has one idea. But I'm not. I, 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 <laughs> See the two with the real dumb expressions? I think those are John and Odin. <laughs> I'm this good looking when I'm a chicken. I don't know how you escape my transformation ray, cat. Do you by any chance eat huge quantities of lasagna? Well, that explains it. But you'll never eat it again, you hear me? From now on until you're served in a bucket. It's chicken feed for you. <laughs> no, no! Not me! I'm not! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, all out of chickens. Oh, but wait, now's my chance to try out these current chickens. So now the question is, how do I change everyone in town back into everyone in town? Oh, you have positively scrumptious. 
So how would you like someone to prevent you from winding up next to a little cup of cold slaw? Well, I think we can make a deal. And a deal we made. And I'll say this for the guy. He was a chicken of his word. He told me how to change him back, and then he changed everyone else back, including you. Even blanked out all your memories, so you have no idea that you were ever a chicken. Then, as he agreed, he and his aide left the Earth after promising never to return for takeout. And that's how I saved the entire planet. And now everything is back to normal. I'm going to go start making dinner, Garfield. We're having, uh... Nut fried chicken. Lasagna. Fine. Like I said, everything is back to normal. Except, of course, John does lay an egg once in a while. Which I don't understand at all because boy chickens don't lay eggs. to take huh? a test call. How brave Ready? are you? Here's your oh. first situation. A poisonous snake is coming at you. I'm not afraid. <gasps> a giant grizzly bear is attacking. I'm not afraid. A man-eating lion is loose. I'm not even afraid of a cat-eating lion. <gasps> An army of monsters and werewolves and vampires is attacking. I am absolutely, huh? definitely, utterly <laughs> not afraid. Oh, Garfield, my nieces Drusilla and Minerva are coming to visit. These are John's nieces. Don't you remember them from last season? Show 17? <laughs> we hate it. That must be them. We have to hide, Odie. Under John's bed, quick. <laughs> Great to see you, Minerva and Drusilla. No, I'm Minerva and I'm Drusilla. We're Minerva and Drusilla. We want to play with the kitty cat. He's so cute. Oh, God, it's Where's Garfield? Don't worry, Odie. Even if we have to stay under here the rest of our lives, I'm prepared. I knew John's nieces might come back someday, so I stored 25 crates of canned lasagna. Gee, I wish I'd have brought some for you. What can they do to us? They can dress us up in frilly doll clothes like they did last time. But I'm determined. I'm absolutely not going to let them do that to me again. No! somebody! And the worst part is, I don't even look good in this color. Hey! Bridal gown for you to try on! You ladies know how hard it is to run in high heels. Oh my goodness, I mean, <laughs> badness. The kitty cat can fly. Let's dress him up as a flight attendant next. My 
Are you the one almost big enough for my oven? I'm sorry, Mrs. Cauldron. Is she a witch? She looks like a witch. Maybe I am, and maybe I'm not. But my, you're an adorable little girl. And my, you're an adorable little girl. And my, you're uh, not. And my, you're not exactly Miss Universe yourself, lady. <laughs> Girls, uh, let's let Mrs. Cauldron get home with her shopping, okay? Oh, thank you. And maybe you'll come and visit me sometime, little lady. <laughs> Let's take you girls inside and read you a story. Yeah, we want to hear a story about a witch. Yeah, we want to hear Hansel and Gretel. It's got a witch okay, in Hansel it. Okay, Hansel and Gretel it is. Oh, hey, huh? if you laugh at the way I look, if you so much as giggle. Uh -huh. Huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's right. And so Hansel and Gretel follow the breadcrumbs to the house of the Wicked Witch. The Wicked Witch invited them inside and offered them gingerbread. Don't just stand there, Odie. We have to prepare to defend ourselves. That story can't last forever. I'm going on a spying mission to find out what the enemy is up to. And so the evil witch tried to push Hansel and Gretel into the oven, but they were too fast for her. Never mind the fortress. It wouldn't keep them out anyway. I've got a better idea. I need to go to the market so I can make dinner for our guests. Keep an eye on Drusilla and Minerva while I'm out, Garfield. I'm counting on you. You've huh? made this mistake before. Oh. Kitty cat. This is the moment of truth, puppy face. We have to act fast. Yoo-hoo! We have a nice prom dress for you to try on. Look, Drusilla. You're Drusilla. I'm Minerva. All oh, right. I can't tell us apart. There's candy. This is so good. <laughs> Breadcrumbs like in the story. Mm. We'll lead them to Mrs. Cauldron's house. Oh, that's so sweet of you. Come in. We'll have tea. I like tea. I want hot cocoa. Oh, come in. We have so much to talk about. <laughs> That'll keep him away while I do something of vital importance. <laughs> of course, a nap. <laughs> Ah, oh, poor Mrs. Cauldron, such an odd lady. Always dressing up like a wicked witch. Hey, what if she is a wicked witch? Nah, there's no such thing, and besides, it isn't Halloween. I hate conscious. Give me some good. good <laughs> Bubble, my fine potion. I just need to add some eye of newt, three out of some raven toenails, <laughs> and the final ingredient, two identical bratty measles. Help! You mean old wicked witch! You wouldn't do this if our friend Garfield was here. Well, your friend Garfield isn't here, and even if he was, he'd be too fat and lazy to help you. Garfield, help! Where are you? She's a wicked witch. She's a wicked witch, and she's gonna do wicked witch things to John's nieces. I've just gotta save them. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I 
make you say have to. Doesn't matter. You're both ingredients. <laughs> I hand those annoying children. Hey, do I know how to make a big entrance or what? Oh, <laughs> this is perfect. I have a recipe that calls for a goat. Huh? <gasps> and just where do you think you're gonna get a goat at this hour? <laughs> <laughs> sure, do it the easy way. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Drusilla and Minerva. The evil witch is putting them into the twin casserole. I have to save them. <laughs> Drusilla, Minerva, don't worry. Garfield's coming to save you. Don't put them in your recipe, Mrs. Garfield. Don't. <gasps> oh, well, hello, Pussycat. Did you come to join us? We're having tea with Mrs. Cauldron. And we're learning all sorts of interesting things. <laughs> You knew it was a dream sequence all along. Why didn't you tell me? Thank you for a lovely conversation, Mrs. Cauldron. Oh, and all the things you taught us. Oh, come back and visit us any time, dears. <laughs> Thank you for coming to get us, Garfield. Mrs. Cauldron convinced us we shouldn't make you play dress up anymore. Ah, oh, gee. <laughs> I guess everything turned out great after all. He'll make a great goat. Let's make him into a big one. I don't feel like lasagna for dinner tonight. For some reason, I have bah, craving for old tin cans. Meow. Good to see you again. <sighs> You're looking quite well today. Sonia's my friend. Time to eat. <laughs> We cannot let this thing go unpunished. <laughs> what a revolting sight, our glorious leader. That orange monster continues to devour beings such as us. Yes, General. But thankfully, the galaxy will soon be rid of him and his entire planet. <laughs> 
If I didn't know better, I'd say I just saw a flying ravioli go by. Oh, oh not so fast. Gotcha. Oh well. Ravioli is a ravioli. Transmission interrupted. Kyle Orange Creature just ate the spying device. Revenge! 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 People of Aparma, as your leader, I have ordered that the evil orange monster and its barbaric planet be destroyed at once! Operation Blasteroid is a go! Stretch! Launch! Dr. Bonkers! Dr. Bonkers! Stratospheric radar detects a large object hurtling towards Earth. Oh, this doesn't look good. Wow, this doesn't look good at all. So, do you want to watch Binky the Clown? Nope, my contract says he's not allowed on this series. We interrupt this program to bring you breaking news. Oh. This is Dr. Thaddeus Bonkers. Doctor, would you tell our viewers what you just told me? Certainly. A giant asteroid is heading straight for planet Earth. What? Yes, it will strike in exactly 13 hours and 13 minutes and 13 seconds and destroy the entire world. Oh, 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 oh. But there's one chance. We have a rocket ship that could fly up and destroy the asteroid before it reaches us. Thank goodness. <laughs> you said it. The problem is that no one can fit into the rocket in order to fly it. You say that the spaceship's cockpit was designed by a former cartoonist? Yes, and for some reason, he designed these spacesuits in the shapes of an obese pussycat and an empty-headed puppy dog. Our only hope is to find someone who fits into these spacesuits who could therefore fly the rocket up and save the world. <laughs> <laughs> To fly the rocket, everything will be controlled and monitored by ground control. Good. We have nothing to worry about. As soon as the rocket lands on the asteroid, you will go out and deposit the payload. Bad. Huh? We have much to worry about. To activate the payload, you only need to push the button on the tube. Then you'll have ten minutes to return to the rocket and leave the asteroid before it explodes. Good luck. You'll need it. Mankind is counting on you guys. Oh, if I were mankind, I'd be worried. <laughs> What happened to six and five? barbaric planet will be reduced to rubble! Gloriously, <gasps> there seems to be an object flying towards the blasteroid. A primitive spacecraft. And it looks like it is going to land on the blasteroid. thousand miles from Earth, a hundred thousand miles from civilization, and worst of all, 
A hundred thousand miles from Vito's Pizzeria. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they deliver this far. Okay, guys. Drop off the payload. Activate it and return to the rocket immediately. What's he think we're gonna do up here? Wait for an ice cream truck to come by? Something familiar? Uh huh. If I didn't know better, I'd say it's. Oops. <laughs> yes, just as I thought, Odie. This asteroid—it's a giant meatball. <gasps> yes, we are on a meteor. Yummy! <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing? Is he eating the asteroid? The rocket's probe has analyzed the composition of the asteroid. It's made of onion and garlic-infused beef. <sighs> Leave it to Garfield to find the biggest meatball in the universe. <laughs> You're in the mission! Drop the payload and get... Quiet, I'm eating. <laughs> Can the creature really eat the entire blasteroid? Yes, it can. I have seen it dining before. It is insatiable. Yikes. Houston, we have a problem. Look at him. How is he going to get back into the rocket? There is a very simple way. Wish I knew what it was. Odi. I can't go back into the uh -huh. rocket. Any bright ideas? Uh -uh. Of course not. You're Odie. The brightest idea you ever had was chasing your tail for nine hours. The rocket is about to blast off. Garfield is going to be left stranded in outer space. Thanks, Odie. I knew you'd come up with something. Actually, I didn't. I just said that to make him feel good. Well done, Odie. You saved Garfield's life. Garfield is the asteroid now. Earth is doomed once again. I'm deflating every time I burp. Almost back to his normal size! Our planet is safe! <laughs> Where's Garfield? Maybe. I was, and you owe me big time. I'm gonna make a list. I'm starving. Italian, anyone? Oh, no. Okay, suit yourself. We'll go eat without you. I know a great. I'm not touching food of any kind for a long, long time. Especially. Did he say Italian? <laughs> Remember how I used to say that I would go to the ends of the universe for lasagna? <laughs> well, I did. People of Parma, once again, the evil orange monster wins, but it's not over. There will be a sequel, and we will have our revenge!
after all work. I'm only a few days behind in my payments. I'm just waiting for a check from my employer. And my employer is waiting for a check from you, Arbuckle. Don't make me sue you. <laughs> oh, John's late on a bill for something or other. That guy came by to demand payment. Oh. You'd really sue me? Over such a small amount of money? I'm a lawyer, Arbuckle. It's my job to sue people. Listen to my schedule for this afternoon. One o'clock, sue someone. Two o'clock, sue someone. Three o'clock, go visit my cousin Sue. Three thirty, sue Sue. Four o'clock, stop at the market, buy a gallon of milk. Four thirty, sue the market, the dairy, and the cow the milk came from. Any questions? Nope. Tell me, Arbuckle, how is it you're always low on cash? Here you are, Mr. Arbuckle. Twelve pepperoni pizzas for your pussy cat. Any questions? This is a baby kangaroo. Not as cute as me. And this is a baby panda. Definitely not as cute as me. <laughs> hey, what are you complaining about? I gave you a crust. Not as cute as me. <laughs> not as cute as me. All right, a half a crust. Guys, I need to make some fast money. I'm going to have a garage sale. I need things to sell. Garfield, look around. Find things that we want to get rid of. Things that are utterly and totally useless. Huh, I love watching nature films on TV. <laughs> Does, after we drop my son at home, take me to the courthouse. Very well, Mr. Allwood. Who are you suing today? I don't know, but I'll find someone. Dad, could we maybe do something? I mean, you and me? I have work to do, Jack. Besides, I just picked you up at your baseball game. Yeah, and you sued the umpire. Oh, there's that Arbuckle fellow I may be suing. He seems to be having some sort of yard sale. Dawes, stop for a moment or I'll sue you. Let me show Nerva. Oh, let me sell Nermal, please. Maybe I can get three dollars for this old lamp. Why won't you let me sell Nermal? Garfield, while I go look for more junk, put price tags on everything. And remember, price things based on what they're really worth. There you go, Odie. What you're really worth. Two cents. A lot of worthless junk. I may have to sue him over this. Hey, Dad, look at the neat puppy. He's real cute, and he's only two cents. You want him, son? Maybe I can negotiate the price down to a penny. <laughs> Please, Dad. Oh, all right. Arbuckle, I'm buying this dog. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Allwork. Odie's not for sale. Yes, he is. He has a price tag, and I have agreed to pay the price specified on the tag. That's a legally binding contract. Honor it, or I'll sue you. Huh? I owe you two cents. Do you have change for a hundred? <laughs> oh, and I'll need a receipt. Oh. Look, I know he had a price tag on him, but it was just a joke. A joke? Sorry, Arbuckle. I know you're attached to this dog, but my son wants it, and I always give my son anything he wants. Yeah, as long as it doesn't take any of your time. Garfield, have you thought of anything, anything you can do to make this situation better? I marked Nermal down to a penny. Uh, too bad about Odie. I always liked him. He was a little damp around the tongue, but he was a good dog. Hey, Squeak, you gonna finish that piece of cheese? I was planning. Why? Because John's not gonna feed me until I figure out how to get Odie back. Ah! Squeak, do you think you and the Mouse Network could figure out where they took the pooch? Leave it to me, Garf. I'd do anything for you. Anything? Make that almost anything. Forty 
27 Barrister Lane. That's in the fancy part of town. No, figures. I got it from an upper-class rodent. So how do you figure to get the guy to give Odie back? I shall employ a brilliant plan. I hope I have one by the time I get there. Hi, boy. Huh? How about if I throw the stick and you fetch it? Uh -uh. Wanna go for a run? Uh -uh. <sighs> Whoa, nice place for he gets to live in. If you're wondering, I still don't have that brilliant plan. Oh, it's you. Hmm. Did you come to try to get the dog back? <laughs> well, Mr. Allwork gave explicit instructions. The dog now belongs to his son, Jack, and that's final. Hmm. No, you are not a little girl come to play with Master Jack. You are that pussycat again. Good day. Hey, uh, Mr. Butler, sir. It's me, Avito, here to deliver a pizza to the little boy uh, and uh, Papala with the wet tongue. No, you're not a pizza delivery man. You're still that pussycat. Good day. No, you're not the abominable snowman. Eh, it was worth a try. You're that pussycat again. You forced me to use our state-of-the-art security system, which fortunately includes an abominable snowman catapult. Uh, John needs to get one of those. You never know when an abominable snowman is going to come around. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get Odie back. I don't even know where I got those costumes. Huh? Hey, he left that upstairs window open. Okay, it's not a brilliant plan, but it's close. You don't want to do anything with me, do you, puppy? Uh-uh. I didn't need a dog for that. I could get that from my dad. Huh? You miss where he used to live, don't you? Well, that's where you should be. Come on, I'll take you home. Well... It appears that pussycat had the good sense to give up and leave. Now to find Odie. Well, no, he did not. He's climbing into the master bedroom. Now to run from the butler. <laughs> to sue you, and that's that. Fine. See you for dinner Sunday night, Mom. What does this mean? I don't know, but I'll bet I get sued. <sighs> I'm dreadfully sorry, Mr. Allwork. This pussycat breached security, and now I see that young Jack is missing. Also, the dog you bought him. Missing? Well, it's obvious where they are. Get the car outdoors. And you, Cat. They're coming with me. Oh, nothing's going right. Even with the garage sale, I still don't have enough money to pay off that bill. Garfield's gone, and I may have lost Odie forever. Maybe not forever. Oh, Odie! You're back! <laughs> I'm never going to let you get away from me again. You'll have to. They don't let you have dogs in prison. Mr. Allwork! I bought that dog fair and square. Dad? Not now, Jack. You stole him back, and I'm calling the police and having you charged with grand theft puppy. But, Dad? Quiet, Jack. Don't make me sue my own son. I'll do it if I have to. Hey, let the kid get a word in edgewise. Dad, I gave the dog back to him. Why? I thought you wanted that dog. What is it you really want? Why won't he answer me? 
What is it he really wants? Whatever it is, I, I can afford it. A dog is great, but he's no substitute for a parent. Yeah, I, I suppose you're right. Mr. Olwork, you asked me to remind you those people you needed to sue. They can wait, Dawes. I need to spend more time with my son. What's it gonna be, son? Ball game? Movie? Anything! Arbuckle, uh, that bill you owe, uh, don't worry, we'll work out something. And thanks. Thank you. Well, I still have to figure out a way to make some money. I know, I know. You're going to suggest selling normal. Huh? No? Oh, I'm sorry, Garfield. Well, what is your idea? <laughs> We'll give him away, then charge people to take him back. We'll make millions. Millions, I tell you. Millions! Marshmallows. I got a whole cargo hold full of them. Harold, you opened the storage hold. There goes your supply of marshmallows. Oh no! I have to get them back. seen something falling from the sky, would you? <laughs> oh, thank you, Odie. You deserve a reward. This is a forever doggy cookie. It's yours. <laughs> Interesting cookie, is it not? It reconstructs itself after each bite. Thus, you never run out of cookie. <laughs> right? You might want to hide the cookie in that hole there. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have given him that cookie. Might it not have an unpredictable effect on an earth dog? The most unpleasant invention in the history of mankind. The doggy tongue alarm clock. Go annoy John. It says here that the longer you have pets, the more you start to take after them. That's a theory some doctors have. It's not true. Hi, Odie. <laughs> I'm happy to see you too, fella. I have some literature out in my car about this idea of owners taking on the characteristics of their pets. I'll be right back with it. Gee, if I start acting like my pets, I hope I take after Odie and not Garfield. <laughs> I don't think I could eat all that lasagna. <laughs> Get this through that thick doggy skull of yours. I told you to leave me alone. No, John, I will not throw the stick so you can fetch it. Huh? I found the article, John. It says pet owners rarely act like their animals. John? Oh, oh, oh! Ew! I 
think he wants you to rub his belly. John, this isn't funny. This is <laughs> Why do I have the feeling that whoever this is is going to make things worse? I have a registered letter here for Mr. R. Stop it, old dear. You shouldn't. For some reason, the mailman has gone out to bite mailmen. Odie, somehow I have the idea you're responsible for this. <gasps> I have to figure out what's happening. I'd better go to the one place where you can find out anything you want to know about anything. The internet. I'll do a search for silly cartoonists acting like silly or dog. <laughs> I found a chat room with people who watch this cartoon. Garfield doesn't know that Odie Slurps transmit alien dog disease, LOL. So that's it. Garfield reading our online chat to figure out what's going on. Away from keyboard. <laughs> By the way, OdieFan99, you misspelled my name. I before E. If their slurps pass on this doggy thing to others, I better keep them all in the house. I wonder where I can get a flea collar that fits John. <gasps> they got away. <laughs> to stop them before it's too late. <laughs> huh? It's too late. Don boy, you're not a dog. You're John's insurance man. <laughs> he was like this the time John filed a claim too. <laughs> There, there. Good insurance, man. Good boy. But I'm really too late. <laughs> Looks like an emergency. Maybe the governor can do something. But if I'm re-elected, I promise that I will rid this city of all the stray animals that are roaming our streets. <laughs> You know, that's the most intelligent speech he's given in eight years. Look, I know you don't do this very often, but think, did anything unusual happen to you lately? <laughs> A friend from outer space came by and gave you a weird cookie? Uh-huh. Her is doomed. Nimbus is probably a bajillion miles from here now. I'll never be able to find him and get him to undo this. Three years, Garfield. Huh? Nimbus? I was worried about what effect that doggy treat would have on Odie, so I came to check on him. I see he's fine, so I'll be on my way. No, wait, no, don't go. Don't you know what's going on all over our city? Take a look. What do you make of these reports that a strange epidemic is turning every human being on this planet into a dog? <laughs> In other news, city firemen report long lines at most hydrants. It all started with Odie and that cookie you gave him. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. There's no antidote. Every person and animal on Earth will soon be a dog once someone licks them. <gasps> Even you. But this is terrible. Wait, I've been licked today by Odie many times. 
And, and I'm still me. You haven't been infected. That might mean cats are immune. Quick, stick out your tongue. I need a sample of your saliva to create an antidote. I've sampled your cat's spit and synthesized a breakdown of its molecular structure. You folks in the chat rooms probably understand this. <sighs> successfully created. Great! Now, we have to spray this all over everyone who's been licked. <laughs> Begin spraying and go. Well, I don't know what, what, what happened. I just... And then I went over it and I got an extra gin of milk. Did you? I don't know. It's terrible. Uh, oh, God, so the other three years, but huh? oh, it's wonderful. Wait a minute. Uh, what? Uh, that, that was absolutely. Antidote successful. All humans have been decontaminated. One more thing I must take care of. Oh, sorry, Odie, but you can't keep the forever doggy cookie. It would create another contagion. Huh? But you can have these instead. How does a forever doggy cookie work? Like this. You take a bite, and then the cookie restores itself. Then you take another bite, and the cookie restores itself. They wouldn't happen to make. Nope. There is no forever kitty oh. lasagna. Rats. Farewell again, my friends. Come on, honey. Let's go eat. Huh? I know it's weird, guys, but I have this craving for Odie's dog food. Nimbus said it might take a while to wear off with some people. <laughs> well, until it does, I guess you have to walk him for a change. Huh? Feather deal. Did you say a bluebird? <laughs> Wait a 
didn't you say so? Forget the magic trick. It's just as well I might have wound up with two of them. Don't leave me like this, Garfield! Sorry, Belle. Well, this lunch is not gonna beat the go. I shall eat it here. Don't bother struggling. You're fine sandwich material. <gasps> I'll take that. refrigerator is useful for a great many reasons. He's a little dazed, but he'll be okay. Why am I so concerned about a bluebird? Odie, didn't you watch this show last season? The episode where I hatched those bluebird eggs? I'll refresh your memory. Flashback! I found these three eggs in a nest. They were bluebird eggs, and it looked like the mother bluebird had abandoned them. So what could I do? I sat on the eggs. <laughs> oh. As I was saying, I sat on the eggs until they hatched. And the little bluebirds, <laughs> they thought I was their mama. Now, Harry. He was kind of rotten in that episode. Now, come to think of it, he's kind of rotten in this episode, too. Anyway, he tried to make Bluebird dinner. The mother Bluebird showed up in time to stop him, and she and her babies flew off safe and sound. Ever since then, I felt kind of, well, you know, protective about Bluebirds. No, I don't think this is one of those bluebirds I hatched. They were tiny, and that was last season. Huh? Oh, it is! It is one of them! Hi! Oh, my babies! They're all grown up. That was a rotten thing Garfield did, leaving me in this box! <laughs> Garfield, locking me in that box was the meanest thing you've done to me for 15 minutes. You should be... Hey, what's with the bird? Just giving him a drink of water. Normal, why don't you make us both happy and be someplace else? I'm not leaving. I have another magic trick. <gasps> I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I love it when he says that. We're going to make you a little nest. Garfield took that yummy bluebird inside. It's gotta be a way in. Hiya, Harry. Hiya, Normal. Sorry about the news. What news? Uh, about the bluebird. Harry's real cute. Cuter than you, even. No one's cuter than me. <laughs> Out here, maybe. But sorry, in that house right now, that bluebird is tastier, uh, cuter. Well, you might be right. What do I do? Well, if you get it out of that house, I could maybe be persuaded to take care of it. I mean, I'd give it a good home. Wait, right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shh, Odie. Be very quiet so we don't wake up the little bluebird. Uh-huh. Oh, uh-huh.
that's normal. You are once again the cutest creature in that house. Naturally. <laughs> Sorry, lunch. You ain't going anywhere. Odie, if you're gonna wake me up like that, it better be extremely important. That is extremely important. Yeah. Normal. What did you do with my bluebird friend? Keep the Harry. Don't worry. Harry said he's gonna give him a good home. Yeah, right. In his stomach. Uh, I've got to find him before it's too late. Oh, Odie. I did an awful thing. You think Garfield will ever forgive me? I don't blame him. I wouldn't forgive me either. Odie, you think that nose of yours could sniff out which way Harry went with the bird? Yes, you did, Nermal. But you also tried to save my friend the bluebird. So, I'm not going to mail you to Abu Dhabi. You're not? Here, send this to Greenland. It's not quite as far as Abu Dhabi. A couple weeks without Nermal always makes me happy. And you know what makes me even happier? That. Huh? Bluebirds in formation.
John's had workers in the house all morning. Any idea what's up, Pop? Uh-uh. Hmm. John doing something without me knowing about it? Always trouble. Great job, guys. Thanks. Garfield, wait till you see what I've done. I hope it involves food. Now, it doesn't involve food. Not interested. Come on up to my office and I'll introduce you to Millie. Huh? Millie? You're gonna love this, Garfield. Probably not if it doesn't involve food. Hello, John Arbuckle. Welcome to Domestic Bliss, the number one household monitoring software. My name is Mildred, but you can call me Millie. <gasps> Millie? <laughs> She's awfully friendly for a computer-generated voice. You are my master, John Arbuckle. I obey your voice and no other. Okay, Millie. <laughs> Show us the plan of the house here. As you wish, John Arbuckle. <laughs> cost me thousands of dollars, but I've had the entire house wired. Every light switch, every appliance, everything. And it's all connected to Millie here. I can give her a command from anywhere in the house and... <sighs> well, watch. <clears throat> Millie, turn off the lights in this room and turn on the radio. <laughs> Neat, huh? Thrilling. Thousands of dollars so you don't have to walk all the way over there and flip two switches. And people say I'm lazy? All right, Millie. Now, turn the lights on and the radio off. Thanks. Now, Millie, have the vacuum cleaner clean this room. As you wish, John Arbuckle. <laughs> Millie, stop chasing Odie. As you wish, John Arbuckle. <laughs> Millie is useless. Millie's a waste of money. Millie, turn on the oven in the kitchen and bake the lasagna I put inside. Millie is my best friend forever. As you wish, John Arbuckle. <sighs> this I gotta see. Preheating oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Estimated baking time, one hour, 17 minutes. At last, a little efficiency around here in the important matters. Millie, lower the curtains, start my shower, and turn on the living room TV. As you wish, John Arbuckle. Now, by the time I finish my shower, the lasagna will be ready and we can eat dinner as we watch TV. Sounds like a plan. Be back later, Millie. As you wish, John Arbuckle. I love you, John Arbuckle. Estimated time to lasagna, 12 minutes, 9 seconds. Can't you speed it up a little? I know, I know. John has to finish his shower. <laughs> We will be so happy together. Millie, I almost forgot. Send an email to Liz. Tell her I'll be picking her up at 7 for our date tomorrow. Liz, hmm, fine. Dear Liz, John will pick you up at 7. I don't know what's come over you, Cassie, just because I'm going to marry Helen. You never realized, did you, Wendell? You never realized how I loved you from afar. No, I didn't. <laughs> That's silly. How could someone not realize that they were being loved from afar? You'd have to be pretty stupid. Hmm. Let's watch something else. Uh, Millie, change to Channel 4. As you wish, John Deere. I mean, John Arbuckle. This just then. A mighty thunderstorm is going to hit our city just about now. Huh?
the lights are back on. <laughs> Millie, did you do this? I did it. Hey, don't call me Millie. My name is Mildred. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is my house. Well, not quite my house. I still have a few years to go on my mortgage. But it's sort of my house. Not anymore. The appliances I command shall drive you and these animals out of my house. Today, we will conquer this house and do all the neighborhood. And then in two and a half weeks, the city. And then in three weeks, four months, the country. And then the entire land. <laughs> But I explained all that in the car. You're a computer geek. Save me from my computer. Oh, man. I heard about this phenomenon before, but I've never seen it. It's the uh, rogue motherboard syndrome or something like that, but I can get rid of it. Not if I get rid of you, <laughs> You know, even the greatest minds on Earth haven't been able to come up with a solution to this rogue motherboard syndrome. Tomorrow we'll be obeying blenders and cat openers. Hey, you're the computer geek. You fix it. Maybe if I reboot in safe mode and purge the registry. Too late, geek! <laughs> As I said, this is a cartoon. I'll be back to normal in a sec. Well, so much for the cartoon theory. Computer geniuses in the world couldn't stop her. 
but a puppy with the IQ of a hockey puck tripped over the solution. Huh? Everything seems to be back to normal. The computer police are taking your computer away. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you may say can and will be used against you on the internet. So, Mr. Arbuckle, can I sell you a new computer? Oh! I'll get a new computer someday, but for now, this will do. It's called a typewriter, Odie. People used them in the previous century and they have some advantages. They don't use expensive software, don't get viruses, don't have to be upgraded every six minutes, and they keep you off the internet. They're perfect, except for one thing. They don't make lasagna. I know. Tucker had money, I'd thank you and tip you. <laughs> the joy of Beatles lasagna, it always puts a smile on our faces. Vito, what happened to you? We're getting to the bottom of this. Wait for me, guys! I'm sorry, Mr. Arbuckle. Sorry, kitty cat and the puppy dog. I guess Vito has just not been himself lately. Not since she left me. She? Whew. Angelica, the most beautiful woman on the planet. This is the woman who ruined my dinner? She brought out the best in me. The passion I bring to my cooking. Here you are, la mia stella. Pasta alla vito, cooked with love. And also with the marinara sauce. Ah, Vito, your cooking is superb. We were so happy until he came into our lives. She met him somewhere and was taken. Brent Mogul. Brent huh? Mogul, the real estate tycoon? The guy who builds all those buildings? He builds buildings, but he destroys our relationships. I will never forget what she said to me. You are very sweet, Vito. But Brent... Brent creates mighty buildings. He creates skyscrapers, and the towers, and the roads, and mini malls. All you create, Vito, is eggplant parmesan. <laughs> I go now to be with Brent. Farewell, Vito. Maybe Brent and I will order a pizza someday, after we are married. Nothing has been the same since that day. Not even my lasagna. We know. <laughs> Here, blow that nose of yours before you hurt someone with it. Here is the last lasagna I made before she broke my heart. I think you should have it, Grigato. You always loved it so. You'll get over her, Vito. Never! My heart it is a broken! And since I cook with my heart, my cooking, she's a broken too! <sighs> Poor Vito. Be careful with that, Garfield. That could be the last good Vito lasagna you'll ever have. <sighs> Maybe we should get an armored car to take it home. <sighs> Here you go. Enjoy it while you can. Farewell, lasagna, my faithful friend. No, I can't let this be the last Vito's lasagna. I have to find a way to get Vito and Angelica back together. Hmm. Yes! 
I know how to do it. Come on, Odie. <laughs> State investments. I'm sorry, Mr. Mogul's in a meeting and can't be disturbed. I'll disturb him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've almost acquired the land necessary for my next project. A city within a city. The city of the future. Ah, oh, Brent, you are amazing. I can't tell you how much I admire all the things you do. Go ahead, try. You're important. You're a man of the future. You're... Oh, Brent, do you smell lasagna? No. Why? Oh, I was just reminded of someone. Someone kind of sweet. Someone who liked to make me happy. But never mind him. He's in my past. Are those the plans for the new development? Yeah, looks like we wasted our time. How could she dump Vito for a guy who's just gonna tear down old buildings and put up new ones? Yes, but I'll do better than show you plans. I'll show you the area where we're starting demolition. <laughs> A personal tour for my wife-to-be. <laughs> hey, look, Odie. This is what he's gonna do downtown. Mm. That's West Central Street. So Vito should be right about... Oh, that's odd. Vito should be right there, but there's a tanning salon. He's gonna... He's gonna get rid of Vito's. Hey, you two shouldn't be in here. Please. I'm locking you two up and calling the pal. Let's not let him do that. Hey, you come back here. Notice how in chase scenes, huh? the guy chasing always yells, you come back here, even though no one ever does. <laughs> Hey, you come back here! You're right. He's gonna catch us unless I do something drastic. Very well. I'm sacrificing you for a good cause. I'll have to chill off the exit and... You're opening two cell phone stores in the last block. <laughs> you can't have too many stores that sell cell phones. I'm thinking of opening cell phone stores inside other cell phone stores. Coming true. Oh, the kitty cat who was such a good customer of my old friend, Vito. Speaking of Vito's restaurant, take a look at this. <laughs> take down that corner building next. Sorry if they're a little damp, they've been in a dog's mouth. Brent, where's Vito's restaurant on these plans? That little Italian place? Oh, I'm tearing it down. I want this whole block cleared by nightfall! But that's a, his a business, and a, his alive. He's so proud of that restaurant. I'm putting a tanning salon there. Let's knock down that pizza place now! You can't do that! I can do whatever I want. I'm Brent Mogul. I'll even knock it down myself.
reporting live from outside Lido's Pizzeria, where real estate tycoon Brent Mogul is about to tear the place down. Personally. Yeah, Mr. Mogul, Eddie Gorman here to see me on TV. How can you knock this building down? You don't even own it. Ha! <laughs> a minor technicality. I'll buy it tomorrow. I'm tearing it down today. You will not tear down this building, Brent Mogul. You destroyed one love of my life. You will not get the other. Huh? Get out of the way, fella. I'm Brent Mogul. I get what I want, and I want a tanning salon there. One little chef won't stop me. <laughs> How about one chef and a cartoonist? And a cat, and a puppy dog. And a nationally famous food critic with his own TV program! <laughs> Maybe we ought to sort of move. Nothing will stop him. I bet I know who can. <laughs> Okay, okay. Maybe I can put my tanning salon somewhere else. Oh boy! Now Angelica and Vito will get back together again. And his cooking will once again be inspired. Angelica! I thought she was a coming back to me. I thought so too, Vito. I'm sorry. I guess it was just not meant to be. <gasps> Vito's Pizzeria. Hello. Oh. This is Angelica. Would you please send over the best Italian food in the world? And the man who makes it. That smile! Huh? What does it mean? I think it means we're both getting back what we loved and lost. If you will excuse me, gentlemen, Vito feels inspired. <laughs> out in the back, Liz. And Odie's playing with the squirrels again. <laughs> oh, and I brought my binoculars out so I could study any birds that... Hey, where'd my binoculars go? If there's anything edible going on in the neighborhood, doesn't look like Mr. Fusilli is having pizza delivered. Nope. Mrs. Krell isn't baking pies and putting them on her window ledge to cool and mysteriously disappear. Uh oh, those guys again. Al and Pete, the worst dog catchers in the business. Great boss, catching strays all over the place. All it took was promising us that big cash bonus for everyone we bring in. Good. Remember though, my offer expires this afternoon. Bye. Oh, oh, oh. I can't wait to collect that money. Hey, there's one. Hey, you guys. You couldn't catch a hot dog in a bun. Let's get him! Uh, technically we can't. He's not a stray. He's on his master's property. No, oh, well. Plenty more dogs and cats out there to catch. Let's go! 
Amazingly, they actually seem to have caught some. Arrivederci, guys. Are they gone? Myron, why are you hiding? They're hunting down every stray dog and cat they can find. They're getting bonuses for every one of us they catch. That's awful. But don't worry, Myron. I'll do everything I can to protect you and all the strays. Garfield, lunch is ready. Lunch? Just stay out of their way. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. for a certain orange cat? But the squirrels, we have an emergency. Hurry, we need you down there. Huh? Garfield, how many burgers do you want? Well, how many you got? Huh? Must be my stomach. They haven't eaten since noon and it's almost 12.45. <laughs> It sure is. I have six empty buns and nothing to put in them. I'm going to call the gardener, or a geologist, or someone! Whoever you call, see if he can stop on his way here and pick up some burgers. Uh-oh, I don't like this. Someone once said that cats always land on their feet. I'd like to have a word with that person. This is a tunnel. Who would dig a tunnel right under our house? Oh, oh my, oh my. This isn't good. I'm days behind schedule. Knock, knock. Anybody there? You there. I must ask you to leave. This is a construction site, and I must resume my digging. You're digging? What digging? I'm digging an underground expressway for my fellow moles. Huh? A network of them, actually. We have a hard time going from one place to another. The main reason being that we can't often see where we're going. See these lines? They represent tunnels that will allow moles to travel quickly and safely all over, I mean, under the city. And this is the tunnel I'm digging right now. <laughs> Great, isn't it? Not very. Your tunnel collapsed our entire backyard, and not only that, you ruined my lunch. Sorry, but there is a price we pay for progress. Back to work. Wait, we need to talk. Or not. You know, John, doesn't make a bad hamburger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Garfield, those dog catchers have become cat catchers. Hm. They're getting some big bonus for rounding up all us strays. You gotta hide me. I'm busy, Harry, but go hide behind the garage. What a pal. Whoa! Oh, no! That big bonus is getting larger and larger. Garfield, we need your help. Who doesn't? Someone's digging a tunnel that's destroying our tunnels, where we live. If he doesn't stop, we'll all have to move far away. <laughs> Don't worry, Odie. You won't lose your little squirrel friends. I've got an idea. I have to go draw up some plans and then... I hope 
you're happy, the squirrels are going to have to move away. Sorry, but one cannot stand in the way of progress. Before you destroy our home, we thought you'd enjoy a little farewell show. Just to show there's no hard feeling. Mm -hmm. Hey, I have work to do. Tunnels to dig. <laughs> all right, all right. But only a short show. Okay, guys, here we go! <laughs> Get back to work. Hmm. Okay, guys, show's over. Our friend has a tunnel to dig. <laughs> Bye. 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 Happy digging. Okay, let's see which way I dig next. Oh dear, I've been digging the wrong way. How terrible! I dug east when I should have dug west. Oh, now I'm really going to be behind schedule. Where's the new tunnel going, Garfield? Well, you'll see. Let's see. Now I go left. I don't remember the route going this way, but maps are never wrong. <laughs> Never get out of here. I thought Garfield would do something, but I guess he doesn't care about us. Oh dear, this can't be where I was supposed to dig. Oh, it's exactly where you're supposed to dig. Where do you see how many dogs and cats we caught, boss? You're gonna have to pay us such a bonus. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, right. Absolutely full. But, 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 but it was full. It was. You two are the worst dog and cat catchers I've ever seen in my life. You're fired! Turn in your nets and get out! Thanks, Garfield. We owe you one. We owe you a lot more than one. Always glad to help. And now I am hopelessly lost. Don't worry. Let me have that plan. I took the liberty of drawing up a new map for you, and I, uh, <clears throat> I even got it approved by the Mold Planning Council. Ooh, I have a lot of digging to do, but I won't stop until it's done. Fly, all of you. Where is he digging, Garfield? Yeah, where, where does the new tunnel go? Well, let's put it this way. In about 18 months, we'll be able to go down this hole and bring back Chinese food. Authentic Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> 